Welcome to the PhonoArena.com video review of the HTC G1. The G1 is the first device to come with Android, Google's new mobile operating system. The hardware is made by HTC and is launched on T-Mobile in both the US as well as Europe. It's a quad band GSM device with 17 and 2100 megahertz bands for 3G in the United States and 2100 megahertz in Europe. The design is rather odd and unlike anything we've seen before, though at the same time very familiar. It has a large 3.2 inch touchscreen display. The display is capacitive, just like the iPhone, which means that it must be touched with a finger and cannot be used with a stylus. Down below the display we find a trackball for navigation. This is the same exact trackball found in Blackberry devices. There are only five buttons, send, home, back, end, and menu. The menu button is very similar to the BlackBerry button found on devices such as the Curve and Pearl. It brings up a contacts menu in pretty much any application and that changes depending on where you are. As you can see the phone is not flat but rather it does have a chin down at the bottom. This actually makes for a better in hand feel although it is a strange design element. On the left side here we simply have a volume rocker and on the right a camera button. The bottom features a covered mini USB port. This port serves as the data, charging, and, and headphone jack. We'd like to have seen a 3.5 millimeter headphone port on this device. However, being HTC, we've only seen that in one device ever. The keyboard slides open, although as you can see since we're being slow here, it doesn't slide so much as it arcs. We're not really sure if there's a purpose for this, but it is kind of cool, and the device is very solid. As you can hear, there's a lot of force with it. There's definite resistance when you start, but once it goes, it flips straight open. The 5-row QWERTY keypad is wonderful. It's very large, the keys are big, and well spaced. They have a slight rubbery feel to them, but are very easy to press. There's no doubt that the buttons have been depressed and you can almost type without looking due to the topographical feel. The back of the phone simply has a camera housing. The camera is 3.2 megapixels as well as a speaker. The camera is actually very disappointing. Imagers turned out bad in pretty much any lighting condition and there's no video playback. In addition, there's not even any options for the camera. It's simply take the picture and that's all. Of course the real story behind the G1 isn't the hardware, it's the software. As a launch device for Google's Android operating system, there's a lot of expectations heaped upon the G1. What we really like about Android is its openness. It really starts and ends there. From the bootloader to the finest details, everything is available to anybody who wants to download the SDK. The operating system can be ported on high-end devices, low-end devices, and even devices that aren't cellular. It's a very flexible operating system that is limited only by the developers. We'll start with the home page. All the icons are where they are, frankly, because we put them there. The giant clock on the front is a widget. Let's say we want to move it. Press, hold it, we feel a small vibration, and we'll move it. We want to put it back. There we go. Same thing is true with the icons. We can move them up and down as we want. Let's say we want to add something. Simply hit that button to pull up the menu. Press and hold. Feel the vibration. And drag and drop it onto the home screen. There's actually three home screens in the home screen. As you slide to the right and left, you can see there's other things that we can add. Let's say we want to add a search bar. There we go. Now we actually have a search bar on the other side, which is pre-installed. So let's say we want to get rid of it. Press and hold. And drag it down. Now it's gone. If you look closely, you can see that the icons actually move faster than the image behind it does. This is just one of the really cool things about Android 
and shows off the graphical capabilities that are yet to come. Unfortunately, it is a new operating system and so is very immature. Simple things such as the video player are not available. However, we have the Android Marketplace. Being an open operating system, developers can create anything for this phone. So, there is no video player, instead of developer, and now we have a video player. Now this isn't the greatest video player in the world. It definitely has some shortcomings, and we can't play all kinds of videos. In fact, right now it's not even loading properly. But the point is, is that whenever there's a loophole left by Google, there's a developer who's going to step in and take their place. We can't emphasize enough how excited we are with Android. The G1 shows a lot of potential, and while it's not there yet, we can definitely tell that this is going to be the next big thing. Let's take a look at some of the features of Android. First off, you can see our Gmail icon down here, as well as the calendar. These are tied to our Google accounts and syncs everything over the air. When you first set up the device, you put in your Google account information. If you don't have one, you need to create one because you can't use the device without a Google account. Everything is synced over the air. There is no desktop client available. Items are pushed from the phone to the web and from the web to the phone. While some people may be leery of Google having all your information, it's definitely a company that has shown we can trust it and we have no issues with it. The so-called cloud computing is fantastic. Though there is no desktop device, we at times get lazy with our Windows mobile devices and prefer the over-the-air sync instead. If you have multiple Google accounts, unfortunately there is no way to sync that right now. However, in addition to Gmail, there's also an email client. The email client will support any POP or IMAP account, including Gmail. So you can simply put a second account on there, as we've done. As you can see, it did sync all of our labels, which makes it easier to use. In fact, in some ways we like this interface better than the standard Gmail interface. The main thing is that when we go to an email, let's pull one up here. As you can see down at the bottom, we have static, reply, reply all, and delete buttons. If we go back to the Gmail client, we'll find that this is not necessarily the case. As we pull up an email here, we have to actually scroll down to the bottom to get all these options. For this email, it's not too big of a deal. However, with conversations that go on for 5, 10, and 20 messages, that can be kind of a pain. Some other cool features are the multimedia. We'll start with the music player. It's not the pretty mu prettiest music player out there, however, it gets the job done very well. As you can see, there's categories for artists, albums, songs, and playlists. Let's pull up our albums and see what we have. All the album art displayed on the phone with no problem at all. This is the only phone short of the iPhone that we've had that with. It does come preloaded with 11 different songs. Some of them are pretty cool, such as Flight of the Concords. Say we want to pull up this Dex Teens disc here. We have a track listing. And we simply pick the song and it will start playing. The interface is very clean. Options are sparse. You really only have shuffle and repeat. However, it gets the job done without a problem. If we want to download music, we can go to the Amazon MP3 store where we can search and download music directly over the air. Integration like this is what's going to set Android and other devices apart from competitors such as iTunes and just general music stores from carriers. We'll be interested to see what happens when Sprint gets an Android phone given that they have their own carrier branded music store. Of course the web is a very important function of Android. The browser is very good and it deserves to be up there with some of the best we've seen. The home page is of course Google, but the user can define this as they wish. If we pull up the menu here, we'll go to our phone arena website. We're running over Wi-Fi right now. We're not in a T-Mobile 3G coverage, but even over Edge things load pretty quickly and we were quite surprised. As you can see it has no problem rendering our page 
one of the more complex ones out there. We can grab and drag around and when we touch the screen the icons come up so that we can zoom in and out. We can also hit the little four icon or four arrow button and go to a page overview. Not only can we drag around but if you can see it actually zooms in on the area we're at. Let go and it will take us to that place. There is no accelerometer so you actually have to slide the phone open for it to change orientation. It definitely looks better in the landscape mode. Opening pages are quick, we have no rendering issues, and everything is handled very nicely. YouTube videos load in the not native YouTube client, which we'll take a look at now. This was a bit of a disappointment, and it wasn't as good as the client we've seen on devices such as the Diamond and Pro. That said, the functionality remains the same, and it's mostly the layout that we don't like. You can see down at the bottom here we have categories such as most popular, top rated, and most discussed. At the top we have a list of featured videos. It's pretty simple to navigate through, but we still like the tabbed version we found on the Windows mobile devices. Videos actually look extremely good even over 3G. We'll pick a random video here so you can see some of the video quality. In this mode you can see that it did go to widescreen so eventually we're sure we'll see a video player that takes advantage of the large screen. Pressing the button you can bring up the controls just like we found on devices such as the iPhone and Touch Diamond. Overall it's not a bad player, we just wish it was a little bit prettier. Another important aspect is Google Maps. The maps load quickly and look great on the large high quality screen. So you can see, just like the web, we can zoom and pan around. If we bring up the menu we can go to a specific address, get directions, and all the other features that you would expect to find from Google Maps. It's pretty much like a desktop experience up to and including street view. We can zoom in quickly on areas and as you see it's catching up with us even as we scroll quickly through the map. We have the map mode where we can show satellite views. We can show traffic and we can even show street view where available. Google Maps is great. We did have some problems with my location. It didn't always find us, and when it did, it was off and off by as much as a mile and a half. But in general, it's the best implementation we've seen of Google Maps yet, as to be expected on Android. Similar to the iTunes Store is the Android Marketplace. Until the end of the year, this is considered in beta, and all applications are free. It's very easy to navigate. As you can see, there's an application section or a game section, and we can also search. It pulls up our search history here. Let's go to the games and see what's available. Everything, as you can see, has a star rating, and these are user feedback. Let's download the Hold'em game and see what happens. You get the quick review, as well as user comments down here. That's very nice because it's often hard to judge the quality of an application just on the short write-up. We choose install and it starts downloading. At the top, we didn't mention this before, but we have our status bar. If we drag it down, we'll see what's going on. Right now we are downloading the Texas Hold'em beta and now it's successfully installed. We also have a voicemail and a meeting waiting for us, which is a calendar appointment. This is somewhat similar to the Samsung Instinct in its design, but it's really simple to use and we like it a lot. If we go back to the home page, pull up the menu, we'll now find the Texas Hold'em. Launch the game 
and here we go. As we said, everything's free till the end of the year. However, a lot of big name developers, such as EA, are holding out till there's a definite revenue stream in place. So we start to see this exploding in 2009, when we'll also begin to see more Android devices. We like the feel of the G1, although it is a big device. It's definitely nowhere near as small as something such as the iPhone or the HTC Touch Diamond, yet it still feels pretty good in the hands. A lot of people will like it for its full keyboard. Despite the slickness of it, some people just won't give up the standard keypad for an on-screen one. That said, Android does not have an on-screen keypad right now, which is another shortcoming we've addressed in our review. All in all, we think it's a good phone, though. It's a nice starting point. There definitely are some things that could have been done better, but HTC made a good effort in being different.